Today we're singing a song about how God is our true north. And what that means is that we don't get distracted by fear or by our circumstances. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, he will never lead us astray and will never be lost. He is our true north. So our song goes like this. true north. All right, let's try it. to see you and look who's here all your best friends from river zone if you don't already know i'm miss jenny and i'm so glad to see you here's the rest of your team i'm miss michelle i'm sydney i'm anna i'm isabella i'm josiah and we're all here because we love you, we care about you, and we know the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you today. So this past week, I had a really big birthday. Miss Jenny is so old, you would never believe it. But there's another birthday in May that is even bigger than that, with a bigger number than that. Do you know what I'm thinking about? I am not thinking about Pastor Greg. I am not thinking about Mr. Keith. It's actually church, the Christian church, not just Northlands, but globally, the Christian church has a birthday, and we celebrate it in May. Now, it all began with what we talked about last week. Um, Michelle, could you remind us what that was about? Yeah, so last week, Miss Jenny gave us some 
Uh, a great example of how the Holy Spirit came into the upper room where the believers were praying and the mighty wind blew and the, the flames of fire came on their heads and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And she used the illustration of a glass of water being filled to the brim and how we can be full of the Holy Spirit. And it was, it was a really great lesson. I hope if you haven't had a chance to watch it, go back and look. But we can all be filled with the Holy Spirit. Exactly right, Michelle. Because when Jesus ascended into heaven to be with the Father, right before he left, he left these instructions to his disciples. He basically said, I'm going to read it from the Bible. You will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses all over the world. He said, don't go anywhere, do anything till you receive this power. And the Holy Spirit came, just like Michelle said. And we also learned that we can ask to receive the Holy Spirit, be filled with him, and we will have that same power. Let's see, I bet some of you kids here, teenagers, you've had that experience. You've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in your lives. Would you share with us? Yeah. So a few years ago when I was in our youth retreat, I was getting prayed for by some leaders and I could feel the Holy Spirit inside of me and it just felt warm and really comforting. And I just felt loved and it was just an amazing feeling because it wasn't like anything I've ever felt before and I knew it was from him. That is so awesome. The Holy Spirit is tangible. It's real. It's not just something we talk about. The Holy Spirit is a person. And so there are times when we feel it like that. There's sometimes we don't have any feeling at all. But we know by God's promise that if we ask for it, he always comes. Who else has a way that the Holy Spirit has helped them? So right now, currently, my mom is in India, and the Holy Spirit helps to comfort me. So your mom is on a whole other continent, and the Holy Spirit is also called the Holy Comforter. And he actually helps you get through hard times. Anna, that's amazing. I'm so thankful for that. Joe, is there a way that you experience the Holy Spirit? Most of the time when I'm soaking, I feel a burst to pray for other people. Hey, River Zone, can you remember that? We'll be soaking in the River Zone room. We'll just be in his presence, listening to worship music, listening to God. And maybe you've had Josiah come by and put his hand on you or just start to speak to you. That's the Holy Spirit in Joe prompting him to pray for you. That's so amazing. Well, we want to hear the full story of the, what happened when the church was born. And so Isabella is going to read to us from the Jesus Storybook Bible. She's going to remind us of what happened next. Michelle told us they were filled with the Holy Spirit. His power came on them. They had been afraid, waiting in that room. What happened, Isabella? So I'm going to read directly from the Jesus Storybook Bible. They threw open the shutters. Sunlight flooded their room as love had flooded their hearts. And the little room was filled with happy noises, dancing feet, singing, laughing. They unlocked the door and surged out into the streets as if they had never been afraid. Peter spoke in a loud voice so everyone could hear. Jesus died for you, he said, because he loves you. But God made him alive again. He has re rescued you. People stopped and listened. The words sank down deep into their hearts and worked like a medicine that makes you well. Like the antidote to a deadly poison. Like a kiss that wakes you from a deep sleep. Stop running away from God, Peter said. Run to him instead so he can love you and make you free. And Peter told them the wonderful story of God's love. God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. How Jesus had come, all that happened. So cool. There were lots of people in the faraway country, in the faraway countries in Jerusalem. 
They couldn't speak the same, la same language, but as they listened to Peter, everyone could understand what he was saying in their own languages. Isn't that so cool, my friends? Yeah. Many people believed, and many became Jesus' new friends and helpers. And the wonderful news of Jesus spread like sparks from a fire to villages, towns, cities, and even more. Every day, more and more people believed. And so it was that the family of God's children, his special people, grew. One man was watching. I'll stop this, Saul said. But this was God's plan. And nothing in all the world would ever be able to stop it. And thus the church was born. The Holy Spirit gave them boldness to begin to grow the church. That reminds me, Miss Denny, when I first came to know Jesus, when I was a teenager, that's what happened to me. My whole life was changed and I wanted to tell others. So I, what, I went to school, I told all of my friends. I used to go to the football games on Friday nights and I would hand out flyers to invite not only my friends, but anybody who was there at the football game, I would invite them all to church with me, to my youth group, so that they could hear the good news about Jesus and come to know him too. I became very bold. And that grew the church in her town. More and more believers came, more and more. And um, we're just going to get ready to, to wrap this up. But our message is, the church was born, and it's continuing to grow. And we want to know, so what was that church like? And think about our church, Northlands. We can't even meet in our building right now, but we're still the church. And it all began right on that day. Um, girls, will you read to us straight from God's word? Yeah. So Acts 2.41 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their houses and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Yeah, really, more and more we're growing. Just like when a baby is born and he, he begins to grow every day. That's what's happening. Even while we're in our homes and not meeting together at Northlands, we're meeting together every day through different forms of media, all kinds of ways to meet together, even when we're praying together. Speaking of praying together, I think it would be awesome if we could close things up in prayer. I'm so thankful for this church. I'm so thankful for this team. Joe, will you, will you pray for us and just pray for all the kids who are listening right now? Okay. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, and I just pray that all the kids that are watching this and all of that have a great day. And I just pray that any pain or sorrow that's going on in any of their lives for it to go away, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. name, we agree with you and we encourage you. All it takes is saying, Holy Spirit, fill me up. And he'll come. You may feel that warmth. You might not. You may feel comfort if you're sad or worried about something. You may get a burst of power to do things that you never thought you could be bold enough to do. So we love you, River Zone. Until next week, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bye, friends. <laughs>